he was given the task of finding someone in Halifax professional enough, talented enough to organize the inquiry. This man. William Alexander Henry, Jr. He's from Antigonish. He was educated at Le Cite de Tour, Murchison Castle in Scotland, Harvard, and graduated from Dow. His law firm was called Henry Rogers Harrison Stewart. And he was responsible for the complete organization. He had to find the venue. He had to interview witnesses. He had to find, uh, he had to do everything. And he suffered for this. He had suffered not only from, because he agreed to be government counsel, he didn't get any of the lucrative contracts that came out of this. He couldn't defend anybody, nobody in his firm could defend any of the people, he won Mont Blanc, all that litigation, he was out. So he did, he did this as a public service and lost a lot of bucks doing it. He was also smart enough to know that the real reason for the inquiry was not to find out the causes of the explosion. The real reason for the inquiry was to take over the Halifax pilotage. And that was it. Also, Henry told Deputy Minister Johnston that it was bad, it was a bad idea to enlarge the scope of the inquiry. In other words, to, ha to have uh, a, a, an inquiry included like this pilotage thing should have been done separately and he because people wanted answers they wanted to know why this explosion happened it was horrible they wanted to they wanted to make sure it never happened again and that was first and foremost on everyone's minds they didn't want to deal with any more uh, inquiries after this one This is the courtroom. Courtroom number four now, it was courtroom number one back then. Uh, the other courtroom uh, was for uh, Supreme Court cases. This was an admiralty case uh, heard out in Rec Commissioner's Court, and this is where it happened. It was quite damaged then. Uh, the walls were open, there was stuff falling all over, plaster and everything, and windows were blown out and boarded up. But uh, that is the exact courtroom that, that it happened in. Justice Drysdale was a good lawyer. He was an attorney general. He should have recused himself, though, from the civil litigation because he was so biased. He'd already made up his mind. It didn't matter. He ignored the testimony of John L. McKinney, who was the uh, captain of the Neria. Uh, actually, he worked for the uh, chief examining officer. McKinney's evidence was very important because it put the uh, collision, uh, the litigation, had to deal with $2 million worth of litigation. So where the accident happened was very important. McKinney said it happened on the darkness side when everybody else was saying it happened on the Halifax side. So he ignored, because it got in the way, he ignored McKinney's uh, uh, testimony at the initial hearing. Very flamboyant, uh, over-the-top style, uh, courtroom bully, basically. Uh, he embarrassed people to no end. Uh, the judge gave him a lot of leeway. Judge Anglin, who was the one of the judges in the Supreme Court, uh, pointed out this later on. Uh, he was given a lot of license by uh, Judge Drysdale because he was he was just. Uh, very, very adamant. Of course, the crew, the bridge crew, which was Captain Hakon Fromm, uh, First Officer Ingvald Iverson, and uh, the pilot, William Hayes, were all killed. The bridge crew was all killed in Nemo. Uh, the only person was John Johansson, who was separated from them. The wheelhouse was not close to where the three men who were making the decisions on Nemo 
uh, they were separated from him, so he had no idea what they were talking about, and I doubt if he was a lip reader. So the point is, is that nobody knows what those guys were talking about, uh, and they died, and Charlie Burchill, for all his faults, was really the only spokesman that those men had, although he did not want to represent Pilot Hayes. In fact, he made an appeal to, uh, to Judge Drysdale not to represent Pilot Hayes, but the judge told him to do it anyway, suck it up and do it. Uh, but there's really no record of what happened. That was on the first day that he said that, but there's no real record that he ever actually had that duty after that. But he was quite the man. He, he embarrassed, try, he used to call uh, Francis Mackey Mr. Pilot. Now if someone called me, uh, said, uh, called me Mr. Guitar Player when I was on the stand, I would get pretty upset at that. It's condescending. Uh, he tried to get their goat a young third officer of the uh, SS Middleham Castle who had, uh, was on the uh, deck of the boat and when, when the explosion happened, he was blown all the way over to uh, Needham Hill. He ended up with no clothes on, all he had was his boots. That's all he had on. And he was in a state of total confusion. He saw the most horrible, ghastly things. And uh, nobody believed his testimony, even though, especially because it was pro Mont Blanc, his testimony was actually quite good. However, nobody believed him. Neither, even the, the judges of the Supreme Court didn't believe him. Uh, judge, uh, the panel dismissed him because he sounded delusional. He, although I pointed out in my book, J Janet uh, Kitts wrote about Barbara Orr, uh, not exactly the same thing, but she was picked up like Dorothy in the Wizard of Oz, and as was, a, I think, another person also was. The same thing happened, but uh, she wasn't under public scrutiny, whereas he was, and uh, he, he suffered. What Charles Birchall wanted to do was set up the idea that there was a lack of communication between the captain and the pilot of Mont Blanc, that there was some problem with English and French, which wasn't true. They used hand signals. Uh, it's universal. They had a good relationship. It's proven over, I mean, read the testimony. They had a good relationship. They had a professional relationship. There was no misunderstanding. Uh, the pilot did not give orders to the wheelsman. The wheelsman was given the orders through the captain. The captain didn't have to take his advice. He was just there to, uh, for advice, and he didn't have to take it. But uh, Mackey got a little screwed up because he couldn't remember whether he blew the whistles or not, which he didn't. At least that's what he, uh, the wheelsman testified that he didn't, Captain Lemetic testified that he didn't, but for some reason, Ca uh, Captain Mackey couldn't, and Captain Mackey was his correct title later on, couldn't remember whether uh, he blew the whistles, and, and of course, uh, uh, Birchall jumped on that as quick as he could. He just wanted to embarrass. The biggest argument, of course, was the starboard helm versus the, the, the English tiller orders versus the French wheel orders. When you say starboard helm, that means go to port. You'll see it in the Titanic movie when the guy says starboard your helm and the guy turns his wheel to the left. Oh, we made a terrible mistake, terrible mistake. No, he didn't make a mistake. That's the way they did it. It means the helm is pointing to starboard. That's why it's called a starboard helm. But your head is pointing in the opposite direction. You give the Frenchman the same order, it's, he goes to the right. That's why there was and, and, and even though there was no confusion, Birchall just pummeled that. And you know, when they were doing, when, every single lawyer there did not get it. I mean, Hose got it, and uh, Demare got it, because they were experienced seamen, but those guys argued and argued. Even in the summation, there were like 10, ten pages or so of arguing about this stupid thing about, it. it's fairly simple if you can just get the basic handle on it, but those guys, they didn't get it. And they were arguing about it all the way through to the end of the, end of the inquiry. They just have it. You'd think they'd have it. And you read down a few pages later. Oh, uh, here we go again. And that's the way it went. <laughs> Pretty funny, actually. Wyatt would get up there and he would say, I'm not a harbor master, I'm not, I'm not in charge of, I'm not a traffic cop. I'm not a traffic cop. 
Everybody tried to get him, they tried to blame him for allowing the Mont Blanc in. Well, Ca Captain Martin promulgated the, the, uh, the law, the rules of the road, the rules of the harbor in 1915. There was no differentiation between a boat carrying explosives and a boat carrying munitions and any boat that didn't. It was all the same. There was no law. The criminal negligence charge, the manslaughter charge, they were all bogus. They were based on intent and they were based on on the breaking of the rules. Well, he didn't break any rules. He couldn't act unilaterally. He didn't have the power to go chasing after pilots. It wasn't in his mandate. The pilots had their own setup. They were a closed shop. Some of them were pulling in 1,500 bucks a, a month. Some people weren't even pulling in $700 a year. Uh, there were 14 pilots. There was a lot of resentment between the Navy. They wanted more pilots, but the pilots didn't want that. They didn't want some, some uh, prairie cowboys or whatever they call them. They didn't want those people in there uh, taken away from their business. And, and, and who can blame them? I mean, all of, all of the problems that are associated with this whole thing are because we're looking at it at 2020 hindsight. Nobody had an inkling that there was going to be a, a damn explosion that would destroy the city the way it did and kill 2,000 or 3,000 people. Nobody knew that. Think of it in those terms. These people were just, it was just business as usual day to day. If someone comes in and tries to take away your territory, you're going to fight that. It's, a, it's, it's natural to do that. There's nothing wrong with that. Un unfortunately, uh, with the Royal Commission that was uh, done later, there was a little bit of graft, there was a little bit of this, there was a little bit of that. Uh, there was dysfunction with the pilotage, you know, with the RCN, there was this, there was that. But the point is, is that everybody was just trying to do their jobs. I think that it wasn't any different anywhere else. It's just that we got caught with, our, we got caught with a very bad, bad, bad thing with that explosion.